Welcome to Helping Homes Find Their People podcast, where we talk about all things real estate with the Galuzzo team. I'm here with Chris Galuzzo and I'm Chris Do Galuzzo. We're going to be talking about the real trends interview with Rory Goland, the Compass uh, president of growth. And we wanted to just go over it. But before we do, how are you doing today, Chris? Doing fantastic. Beautiful day out. Enjoying the sunshine, spring weather in Long Island. Spring is here and it's feeling like pollen is everywhere. Well, that's the other thing. I can't breathe very well, <laughs> but we're doing okay. So um, going over today, we wanted to go look, take a look at what Rory had to say about Compass and what was their goals and and their, their, um, their boundaries and what they're really shooting for as a company. And we want to just take a look at it right now. Absolutely. It was very impressive. America's largest brokerage by deal volume, two years in a row according to Real Trends. But Compass, also one of the largest loss makers in the history of residential brokerage. There's so much going on with the company and I'm very happy today to have one of its top executives, Rory Gollett, who is the president of Growth. Rory, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, good to see you. We're chatting right after your first quarter earnings mm -hmm. uh, and the losses that Compass saw were about 150 million. Mm -hmm. That's the loss. But it looks like the street has responded positively to whatever happened in the quarter. So maybe you just start with explaining that because it, to me, it reads like a loss. Yeah, yeah, What's going absolutely. On? Well, first, thanks for having absolutely. me. Absolutely. Um, so I think one thing is really important to qualify is the gap net loss that's reported of 150 million. That's not a cash loss in total, right? So that includes stock-based compensation, includes depreciation and amortization. So if you back those things out, the actual cash loss in the quarter is about 80 million. Okay. Um, that is down significantly from the, the cash loss in the first quarter of 2022. Yeah. And so I think what investors are reacting to is the fact that last year we embarked on a pretty aggressive cost reduction plan. Right, I think you talked about 600 million is what the target yeah, was. Yeah, a couple hundred million dollars of cost reductions that we wanted to pull out of the business right. with the goal of being free cash flow positive this year. By Q2. By Q2 being the first quarter okay. that we would do it. Yeah. And then for the whole year, if okay. you add up all the quarters for the year, with the goal of being free cash flow positive. Mm -hmm. And so this first quarter, I think what you're seeing investors react to is the fact that we we brought our losses down right. and we signified on the earnings call, Robert Kalani, our CFO, Greg Hart, our COO, all reaffirmed that we intend to be free cash flow positive in the second quarter and free cash flow positive for the year. And so I think investors, they're always looking forward, mm -hmm. are looking forward towards the subsequent quarters and saying, okay, you're proving to us that you actually can get there yeah. and you can get there in a market that by any stretch, no one would describe the current real estate market sure. as booming, yeah. right? I think that's, that, that's the other big point is that intention is one thing. The reality in which you operate is another. And I want to place a context, just to be fair, anywhere lost close to 140 million. I believe Element lost 15 million. They're a lot smaller than you guys are. There's very few brokerages that are able to make money in this market. Yes, you said it's not a cash loss, the 150, but it's, a, I mean, it's still money. I mean, there yeah. is a reason you have to report that 150. For sure. And there is a reason that investors are concerned that you've lost north of 1.1 billion over two years and a quarter, mm -hmm. right? There is, that is concern. Yeah, I think actually one of the reasons the stock is up over 30% today is because I think a lot of those concerns have been mitigated. Okay. And the reason why is if you think about our business, you take a step back. Many of these other companies that you mentioned that also lost tens of millions, if not right. hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars, have been in business far longer than us. You know, we've only been a public company for about two years. Right. And when we were building the company, the reason we raised so much capital, investors gave us that money and said, use this capital to grow. Yep. Don't raise it from us and put it in the bank and do nothing with it. And, and to be fair, you did grow. So I, I wanted to go over a couple of things too. I feel like they're more investing into themselves as well. So that's why the investors don't feel as uncomfortable giving more money to Compass and they are growing. Probably the largest agency in America right now on, on sales volume and they're putting it into the infrastructure. So our IT, our technology at Compass is, there's no one competing with us. There is no one that can handle what we can handle. Our back office, we have a page it's called Workplace. It's Facebook for 29,000 agents that are in Compass right now. We're giving each other referrals across the board. It's a real dynamic company that uh, no other company can compete with at all. Yeah, and I feel like um, seeing them try to try their best to mitigate that that loss uh, the best they could, and to say that they're going to be positive cash flow in the next quarter, 
I mean, it says big things that they, they do have big goals to, you know, get the money for the shareholders and, and also make sure that the, the agents themselves can produce as much as possible. Um, so all of the stocks for all of the real estate companies, including most of the companies in America now have gone down and over the last year and a half, two years. And they started off at 18, they went up to 21 after they opened, after the IPO. And then they were trading at like two or three, and now they're closing in on four, four dollars per share. And that's a testament because the market is a little flat. There is problems with inventory and sales, but the truth is Compass is strong. Compass is getting new agents. They're not getting agents and giving them these huge signing bonuses like they used to. Agents are coming over because of the technology, because of the infrastructure of our company, and they're enjoying the atmosphere. I mean, we have a great culture. We get to enjoy the top agents around the nation and get to get in touch with them anytime we really want, and have, we have access to all of that. And we love being with this company. They treat us very well. We do very well with them. The name brand now is getting more associated. I think that they're going to uh, be international in the next few years. I think they need to qualify and quantify what they're doing here in America first. I see that they need to do their IT, get it even stronger, their back office even stronger. To say that they need to get it stronger is a lot because most of these companies are just not competing at all. Compass is really in heights above all of these other entities. So they don't have a lot of work to do, but they do need to fine tune. To go into Europe and to go into international, it would be uh, sacrificial right now. They need to really qualify everything they do here. Get the, the United States down pat, then you can move forward. Yes, and, and we love being with this company. They treat us very well. We do very well with them. The name brand now is getting more associated. Long Island, it's starting to ramp up. The Hamptons is very popular already. Manhattan is very popular. Brooklyn, Queens, very popular with the name. Long Island now is becoming compass country. It's becoming very strong and powerful. It's because we're here too. Yeah, and the Galuzzo team is really ramping it up too. And you know, we partnered up with Cardinal Financial. Cardinal Financial is doing a fabulous job with us. We're making a nice partnership with a great company. They're giving us great atmosphere. They give us this studio to use. It goes hand in hand. Compass and Cardinal Financial are doing fabulous together. Good partnership. Yep, we needed it. Why not? All right, let's go over the next. So I don't think investors were surprised. We certainly weren't. Mm -hmm. The intention was always invest that capital, spend it to grow and build the business. And now that we've done that, now that we've built that technology platform, mm -hmm. now that we're in hundreds of markets around the country, now that we're number one, now we can actually really focus on generating free cash flow. Yeah. And once you generate free cash flow, it's effectively like raising more capital because you can take that money and then reinvest it okay. in the things you want to do. A couple points there. One is your investment, the moat that you've created mm -hmm. uh, through technology, through whatever else you offer. It's not a moat that can just sit there. It needs to be constantly watered. 100%. And I think what's happened is you've slashed a lot of your marketing staff. You've slashed a lot of your support staff. You said that you're not gonna do anything in terms of agent facing roles, mm -hmm. basically stuff or whoever existed to make agents' lives easier and better. Mm -hmm. But at some point you're gonna take a dent on that too, right? So when you stop feeding the beast, you fed mm -hmm. the beast, you grew, you did all that, yep. you bled a lot of money, but you did feed the beast. When you stop feeding the beast, something's gotta give. And I think agents are realizing that, you're seeing a lot of that. We have reported on concerns that you're not providing as robust a package as you used to. So how do you respond to that? Yeah, well, first off, I'll challenge you on bled in terms of money. Okay. I'll use invest. Okay. Um, but the look, the proof is in, is in the actual results. So we are still spending over $100 million a year just on research and development when it comes to technology. Okay. Right, that is far more than any brokerage combined, mm -hmm. most likely in our space. Certainly more than any company that we I'll, I'll with, give you that, right? no, so, no, no so $100 million of annual investment on top of $1.5 billion of historic investment. So the the moat there is so vast that we don't see a world where any traditional brokerage catches How'd up. How'd you get to the 1.5 billion when Robert talked about this about a year and change ago, mm -hmm. the number he used was 900. So you're telling me in the last year or so you've spent another six million? No, cumulatively over okay. the course of our entire existence, uh -huh. 
When you add in the actual compensation for all of our product and engineering staff, okay. when you add in vendor costs, server costs, everything, acquisition costs for buying certain technology companies, you put that all together, that's $1.5 billion. This is the number that Compass equity, is using now, $1.5 billion for that's, technology? That's correct, okay. including equity compensation, right. cash, comp cash compensation, all those different things, add that up, it's around $1.5 billion. Okay. So that's the, the start, the, the head start that you have. Right. Every year, we're still spending $100 million in technology, okay. right? So on the technology side, there is no world in where we see someone else being able to catch up to that mm -hmm. because no company is going to be able to raise the kind of capital. No investor is going to finance that. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it manifest in the things that we've built and released. We're about to actually release a new program called Performance Dashboard, mm -hmm. which is an interactive dashboard for all of our agents to track their performance, the performance of their teams. Um, we're way ahead on AI. We've been using AI internally for almost two years now. We have a product called Likely to Sell. Okay. So I have something to go off of that as a real estate agent. Whatever access they give you, let's say the Compass program, all their access to marketing and everything like that, whatever output you put out and the action you create and you take advantage of what they give you, then you're going to be able to utilize Like they said that the agents didn't feel like they were getting as much. If you use everything that they offer you and actually learn it, perfect it. If you have a question, they do have people that are there to support you and answer those questions um, regarding the Compass program that they have. The uh, CRM that we use is proprietary and it has the greatest things. It's likely to sell. If we really utilize likely to sell, they said 8% of our CRM base will buy or sell something in the next year. That's an amazing statistic. And if we focus on that, we'll get another eight deals a year out of a hundred. We have four or five hundred, maybe more in our CRM that we can generate that are real sphere of influence clients and customers of ours. So if we have 500, we're looking at 40 sales a year right out of our CRM, likely to sell. It's really impressive. And that's all AI driven. So it's very an efficient way an interesting way and uh, you have to stay on top of it. So that's something that we're going to be doing with the Galuzos right now, getting that focus going because we don't have that done yet. We have to really step that part up. The uh, artificial intelligence, the AI part, they use it more for posting on Instagram. You can put it in there and change it up really easily and the AI will do it for you. Or any listing description, you can definitely utilize that for all your future listing needs or even transforming your CRM, it can help you out with that and organize. But we're still learning as well. There's a lot to learn, but you take a look at what you your weaknesses and your strengths are in the program and you work, work through it from there. Everybody's picking on Compass because we're the new game in town. We don't advertise on many of the avenues that are writing articles or doing videos about, you know, real estate. So a lot of the companies are after Compass. You know, they, they don't want to see us succeed. We're not pumping millions and millions of dollars into their advertising budgets. So they're coming after us. Truth is, Compass is very strong. Compass is viable across the country and here on Long Island. You know, our family and all of the agents that we have, I consider them very, very strong agents. So when we refer somebody, I just referred somebody in the Bronx and they're quality agents. They've done probably about 50, 60 deals in that community already. And then somebody gives us a referral in Long Island, center of Long Island, we're able to handle it professionally. Uh, that's how I feel every agent at Compass, most of them are not new. Most of them are experts in their industry, experts in their community. And that's why I love working with this company. As you can see, Rory's an expert too. I mean, the, this, the ownership of this company, Robert Refkin, Rory, Gordon Golub, brilliant, brilliant in the real estate industry. They are very knowledgeable. And I know Gordon for over 30 years. The man knows his business. He came from Manhattan. His background is there, strong committed and uh, gives them a real good flow in Manhattan and out all across the uh, United States. Yeah, he's very, very knowledgeable. All right, that was the Galuzo Team Podcast, helping homes find their people with Chris, Elena, and Christo. Thank you guys for tuning in and like, subscribe, and follow us for any updates and get updates on our future episodes. Thank you for listening.